Good morning, friends, and welcome to Move Miss Day 5. Yeah, <laughs> I can't keep track of anything. Also, being like a day off, all <laughs> it makes it really hard for me to keep track of like, what day is it actually? Um, but it is Move Miss Day 5, and it is Wednesday. Stephen just went to um, take care of some things with like deposits and money, you know, the adult stuff. I was left here to listen to Ariana Grande on a vinyl, which you have all asked about my record player, so let's talk about that first. After I showed this record player, everyone started asking me about it because you guys really, really liked it, and I really, really like it, and I went through many record players until I found one that I love. This one has a record player, a CD, and a cassette because cassettes are coming back. So I love it for that reason. Also, the sound on it is so good. You could play it with this up or down. You know how some record players need to have the whole lid up in order for the record to move? That is not the case here. It also has the little attachment for the smaller records that you need to put on the center of this, but I love this record player. It's now going three years. It's my favorite, favorite record player. I love vinyls. I just think it adds so many layers to the music. I will link it down below. I love it. It also comes in a bunch of other colors. Had I thought about it, I probably would have done a little bit darker, but this finish might work really well in the next house. So love it, love it, love it. Cannot tell you enough about it. I love it so much. Now that that's out of the way, because I know many of you were asking about that, and I know influencers say many of you have asked, and <laughs> literally many people had asked. Today, it's like nine, nine, Stephen and I both slept in until almost eight, and then, well, Stephen took care of the dogs and then came back to bed, but we woke up around eight and like just started moving about the day. Stephen has like a little bit of a flexible schedule this week at work. So this morning I was finishing editing the video and doing all of those things. I think I'm actually almost there. I think I have like 15 minutes left of processing. We are just hanging out with some doggies. We have a doggie there with a fresh diaper on. We have a, <laughs> we have a doggie over here who just, this, is, this corner is her home. Isn't it? This corner is your home. It was a princess. Someone says she looks like Phyllis Diller with all her hair on top of her head. And now that's all I see when I look at her. It's now a little after nine. I want to get to the spot like 1030. Um, so I might actually work out right now and then shower so that it's all, I'm all clean and fresh for my facial. But I'll see you in a little bit. I am back from my facial. And I feel so relaxed. She also did like a shoulder, arm massage, neck. I just feel so good. Checking in on the branch manager. Get stick. It's just sticky. The branch manager accepted a raise to a higher position. She is really kicking butt and taking names. She walked into her first meeting, said all heads will roll. Right. Right. <laughs> What's so funny is we have all this grass and this is still one of her favorite areas. Like she will lay. She will lay. She's such a funny dog. Old man doesn't want to come out. It's so beautiful out. It's like 60 degrees. It is sunshiny. I wish I had patio furniture. I would sit out here and read. Oh, you get that stickers. Oh, get that sticky branch manager. Let go. Drop it. Drop it. Hey, drop it. Such a happy doggy. I will say it will be nice to not have so much land and yard to deal with. Right? 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 Oh, two stickers. Oh, which one are you going to pick? Which one are you going to pick? Do a cookie. Ugh. I am making lunch right now. Watch this. Drop it. All right, inside get a cookie. She knows to drop her sticks. Oh, is you getting a drink? All right, Alexa, off. Let's get cookies. 
um, for lunch, because I haven't eaten yet today, I am making just um, some Whole Foods organic gluten-free chicken nuggets. So just air frying those, probably throw them on a salad, call it a day, keep it easy. I know this is gonna sound ridiculous, but it's like one o'clock in the afternoon, look at my hair. I ended up just reading, well, I caught home and I ate lunch and then I took the dogs out in the yard and we just played, well, Mabel and I played Papa's, walked around for like 45 minutes because it's so beautiful out. And then I crawled up on the couch and opened up the windows and was reading my book. I'm reading the book called The Villa. It's like a suspense. It is fantastic. I highly recommend my skin. So it looks really good. Anyway, the, I was reading The Villa because I want to wrap it up and finish it tonight or tomorrow. And it was so, so good. And then I just like kind of dozed off. But I have a couple things that I want to get done. So let's do it. So I have bought us a big roll of like wrapping clean wrap. It's essentially just a big roll of saran wrap. But what I want to end up doing is some of my picture sets I want to go ahead and wrap up so they're really secure and then I can just wrap them with a blanket. Well, the movers will. These will probably go in the moving truck. So I'm going to try to do it by myself, but I think it's going to be pretty hard to do. I definitely think this is more of a two-person job, but I'm thinking if I set it on the edge of the table, that might have been the smarter way of going about this. Yes, setting it on the edge of the table is the way to go. And then I'm just going to do some quick layers the other way around. So that set of pictures are now all secured and then they'll get wrapped with a blanket for extra padding, but that worked. I'd suggest <laughs> if you're ever trying to do this to like have them half on, it's easier to wrap that way. But that set is done and I have one other set to quickly wrap. So if you follow me on Instagram, and if you're not, you should, I have been like really trying to like source all of our furniture. So I have a bunch of swatches getting delivered for chairs and stoles. I kind of have the furniture pieces picked out, but now it's finalizing the swatches for the fabric and the upholstery. And then we are also going to reupholster our, our house chair that's in our living room the one with the really cool back. So that chair is getting reupholstered, but it's not going in the living room. It's gonna go in our bedroom as like our corner reading chair with like a really cool antique bookcase and like a brass lamp going over it. I have a whole vision. So that is getting reupholstered. I have fabric swatches coming for that. And I've also already found some upholstery shops in Charlotte to do the work skin is like glowing um but where i am like most urgent and actually might have them delivered before we even move is rugs so i have some swatches coming today for area rugs because we essentially sold all of our rugs yeah except our bedroom big one that you guys really love and my huge dining room seagrass rug uh if you're going with a natural woven rug, never go with jute. It's really hard to clean and it absorbs every stain. If you want a natural rug, they're a little bit not as comfortable and soft, but seagrass is the way you always wanna go. So I have really invested in really good seagrass rugs. Those are going with us. I don't know where the oval one is going, but the big one under the dining room table will still stay in our dining room but I need huge rugs for guest bedrooms and my office and the living room. The reason I'm feeling urgent about rugs is because of Bubba's. Bubba's really struggles on hardwood floors. The thing about our new house is they're 
are only hardwood floors. There is not a speck of carpeting in that whole entire house. The main reason our living room is carpeted and our stairs are carpeted and our upstairs is carpeted is because of Bubba's. We had always planned to um, have the hardwoods come through the living room, but he just needs carpeting. So I know I'm like rushing carpet orders, which will dictate a lot of things. However, they need to be in the house. And what I don't want to do is invest in some rugs just to have them and then just like give them away. I want to get the ones that we're going to have forever. So I think I have found our big living room rug, which we need like a 10 by 13. Is it 10 by 13 or 10 by 12? I think it's 10 by 13. Whatever the standard 10 foot one is, is what we need because we'll have the sectional, a coffee table, two armchairs all on that rug. And you need to make sure that at least the front legs of every piece of furniture are on the rug. When you're thinking about a living room, that's what you want to think about. When I think about a size of a rug for a dining room, it's always that you can pull the chair back and all four legs are still on the rug so that if a person was sitting their whole chair would still be on the rug. So that's kind of how you dictate the size for a dining room. And with a living room, you wanna make sure that all the front legs of your furniture are at least on the rug. And then in a bedroom, you wanna make sure that's about three quarters up under the bed and that you still have a decent amount at the foot of the bed sticking out. So I usually do about like halfway up to three quarters of the way up. I think pe the mistake people make with rugs is they get too small of rugs for the space they're in, which obviously the cost of rugs is outrageous. However, um, when you're thinking about it, living room, you want your front legs of every piece of furniture that's in that like conversational area, at least on the rug with enough walking path. Dining room, you wanna be able to pull out a chair and it still could be completely on the rug. Bedroom, you want it halfway to three quarters way up under the bed. Those are my rug rolls. <laughs> ah, I love a good um, alliteration moment. All right, Steven and I were talking and I'm actually going to make the stuffed shells tomorrow because we have leftovers and I need my nine by 12 pan for the stuffed shells. And I've packed all my other nine by 12 pans. So I only kept my one La Crusade one out. So I told him we'll have leftovers and finish those up so I can make the stuffed shells tomorrow. And that's what we're doing. I might tune into some tennis. I know that the matches started around 2 p.m. Eastern. So I might tune in and see who is winning and who is playing right now. But having a great and glorious day. I hope you are too. Look at this hair. All right, I uh, <laughs> still haven't done anything. Um, I was just watching some tennis and I was going through some questions um, that I hadn't answered in the Move Miss Day One video where I answered some of the Instagram questions. And one that showed up multiple times was like, well, I'll summarize it because it's kind of all falls into one. Like, A, what made you willing to like leave a job that you've been at for so long? And like, how did you know it was time? And like, how did you deal with the fear of that? Which I totally understand. And I think everyone's circumstances around their career are all very different. Um, and I, mine is different as well. I'm able to do this, which like I have continued to say, like is a blessing from God and is not lost on me. But I think some things that I really thought about and actually wrote down in my journal a little bit is that I felt... <sighs> I felt like my value from others, the way I valued myself was all tied to this job and this career. And I kind of started to realize that like, it isn't. That is not where my value comes from, nor is it where I can try to find all of my value. I think that's why you've seen me struggle with talking to myself negatively and not like really seeing my own worth because I connected my worth to a job and the opinions of others. And I think, and it's only been three days, I am realizing that that is not where my value is found and it is no longer how I define success. I think we go through life defining success as titles, accolades, awards, recognition, praise, um, titles and money and positions of power. 
and being busy and all of the things that we kind of equate to successful people. And I think I'm starting to really recognize that like, that's not my definition of success anymore. My definition of success is waking up happy and at peace, going to bed at peace, having quiet mornings and connecting with Steven and being able to be present with him and having morning coffee on a Tuesday together. And that to me is success. Um, so I think that has shifted for me and just really where am I finding my value? We often will tell ourselves like there's nothing better out there or I just need to stick that out, stick this out and keep doing this because it's fine and it's, paying the bills and etc. And that's a lie we tell ourselves because we don't want to be brave enough to take the change. And I think you should realize that that's a lie that you're telling yourself and just go for it. The act of staying somewhere is sometimes far scarier than the act of venturing out and trying something new. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm literally leaving all doors open and it's a luxury that I have the next four or five months to figure out what I want that to be. If it is being a content creator or if it's doing something else, that's the time frame I'm working in because I want to see what I can do with this career and see if it can become a career. And I think I was always too just fearful to try it. And I would say the fear of not trying it and not finding out what it could be is scarier than missing out on what could be an amazing opportunity. I also think it's okay to tell yourself and to recognize that perhaps you've just outgrown something and that's not bad, just that it may no longer fit. And if it doesn't feel right in your spirit and if it's not really something that brings you joy or you're feeling a sense of burnout, it could be quite possible that you've just outgrown something. And that just means that you're growing and evolving and it's not negative towards anyone or anything. It's just that things have shifted and things change in life and people outgrow things and move on all the time. Relationships, seasons, homes, jobs, we outgrow everything and that just means that we're constantly evolving and trying to better ourselves and we're not getting it right, but something no longer fits. Would you keep wearing a pair of pants that no longer fit you? No, because it's not comfortable. So find something that does fit, preferably with an elastic waistband. I also think sometimes I navigate from this idea of like, well, next year will be different or things will change or I will change or this will change. <laughs> If, it, if you've told yourself that more than a handful of years, your feelings are probably not going to change, which once again is probably your sign of outgrowing or it no longer being a fit. And I think that those are really the reflections I've had around this change because it was quite scary. And the whole weeks leading up to the end, I had moments of like, should I backtrack and just stay? And maybe we pull out of the contract with the hat. Like, no, it doesn't fit and it's okay. And it's all right. And I'll find something that fits. And I'm going to take the time to figure out exactly what I want that to be. So that would be the advice or the thoughts that I have around leaving a job that you've been at for a long time and really reflecting on if it's the right time or the right opportunity. Yeah, that's just my take on it. But I can tell that it's probably been the best decision I've made in my life. I am three days into this and the lightness I feel and the fact that you guys can palpably feel it through a camera allows me to know that it was okay to outgrow and it was okay to move on.